Hi, this is Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Art Studio, and this is the second video of the Animals Gone Zen Block of the Month series. Today we're going to be coloring the cockatoo. And before we get started, um, this is all done with pencils. Um, according to the instructions, they are primarily done in ink tense pencils, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but I've also provided alternative pencil colors or watercolor pencil colors that you can use that come very close to the colors that I used in, in the uh, cockatoo. Um, and before we get started, I want to go over the most important part of coloring with pencils, which is fabric medium. And I'm just going to talk briefly about various different types of fabric medium. Um, you can go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and these are the ones, Americana is one, So Soft is another. Both of these brands are sold in almost every single uh, craft shop, and they're good. I, I have used them before. I will tell you, I think that the So Soft tends to actually go bad after a while. I opened this up earlier, and I'm just gonna show you this and see if you can see it. Uh, it's got kind of a beigey tint to it, and this bottle is probably a year old. Um, I'm probably going to test it and see if it still works, and if it doesn't, I'm gonna throw it out. It, fabric medium can go bad. It can actually get moldy. Um, so keep an eye out on the samples that you guys end up using from me and any of the bottles that I send to you. I do make my own. Um, Typically, uh, the bottle with green label is plain, and this bottle doesn't have any um, label on it, but if it's an orange label, it'll be pearlescent. Um, the reason I like making my own is I actually put a product in mine called No Flow by Jacquard, and it helps retard bleeding, which is probably the biggest issue with some of the ones I'm gonna show you next. Um, golden, I have a very large container of golden. This stuff is great but uh, it is very watery, and when you use it, it can bleed uh, pre pretty easily. Um, so I, I typically use this if I'm truly going to be washing something and wearing it. I think this would be great for clothing. I don't necessarily like it for my, for my quilts. Um, other stuff that's out there, um, Sherry Rogers Harrison makes her own. Sorry, this bottle's uh, label's a little yucky, but um, that's what happens when you use it around water. Um, Sherry makes a plain and she makes a golden fused, and this is her pearlescent. Very good stuff, um, very high quality, and um, if you look there, you can check out her website if you're interested in purchasing some of hers. The uh, stuff that a lot of people use, and then you'll see this on videos quite a bit, is aloe vera gel. Um, I like it, but if you use too much of this, it, it will flake later on and your color will actually come off. So I typically stay away from using aloe vera gel um, for large projects like we're doing today. If I were doing small projects, it would be fine. The other thing is somebody asked me recently, can you use this to mix paint? And I will tell you, frankly, no, it will evaporate and your paint will ultimately disappear. So if you're gonna use this, only use it sparingly and use it for small projects rather than a big one like we're doing today. Finally, um, here's one I do not care for. It's Liquitex. And the problem with Liquitex is it's very thick and gummy. And when it dries, it dries rubbery. So um, you're welcome to try it, but mm, I'm just gonna tell you I stay away from this. Um, somebody also asked me what's in these. If you look at the label here, let me just try to get this up here where you can see it. Um, you can see the ingredients for the Liquitex. Most of these are a type of polymer, acrylic polymer. Um, it really just depends on who the manufacturer is. Most of my products that I use to make my own come from ProChemical, 
and uh, I really like their stuff and I, they actually make great paints, which we will be using down the road um, when we come to some of the other animals. Last but not least, here's something that I do on a frequent basis, and this will definitely come into play when we do the elephant. Um, I actually make tinted fabric medium. You can see this, it's, it's yellow, and uh, I've been using this quite a bit on a project that I'm doing for a quilt show. Um, a lot of times when I need a large area colored, I will tint the fabric medium so that it makes it very easy to um, use without having to get any streak marks. Okay, so what else do I have here um, to, to help paint? Well, you get a paint palette, which we'll be using quite a bit, and water. Believe it or not, there's water in there, and this is what I'll clean my brushes with. And speaking of brushes, let's talk for a minute about brushes. First of all, I, I use a, a wide variety. As you can see here, these are all small tipped um, from a scrubber to a round, and we're gonna talk about this one here in a minute, to a filbert. Uh, this is a, I believe called a shaper, another filbert. And then what I wanted to show you here was um, after a while with these paint brushes, they get really stiff. Um, this one, let me see if I can get it here. This one's going to have to be thrown away. It is really so stiff that I, I probably can't have, uh, you know, get any kind of fabric medium or color on it. So this is one after a while. Um, those of you who get complete kits, you're gonna always wanna test your paint brushes. And if you find that they're really super stiff, um, please let me know and I'll make sure I send you more. You should be getting um, regular different types of paint brushes in each kit, but if you find that you like one in particular but it comes stiff like this, I will certainly replace it. Okay, and then the other one I wanted to show you was what not to use. This is a watercolor brush, and if you'll see, the bristles are very, very soft. Um, this does not make for good painting on fabric. Um, these bristles are just way too soft and it won't uh, it won't spread the fabric medium well and you'll also get kind of little hairs sticking out with paint on it and you can actually get color in the wrong spots. So stay away from watercolor and, and again back to our selection. We have uh, most of these are made with nylon or, or taclon um, and the ones that are dark like this they're usually called golden taclon all of which they're fairly stiff uh, and make uh, really good for scrubbing and getting the fabric medium into the corners of the stitching. And you'll see this today as we, we do the coloring. Okay, now let's talk about the coloring tools used. Um, most of the things that we're doing today are with ink tense pencils. And um, any of you guys who got the full kit, you'll find whole pencils in here. Um, any of you guys who've gotten my kits in the past, you've usually gotten half pencils um, with Animals Gone Zen because we're going to be using the same colors over and over again. I felt it necessary to provide full pens. Um, but certainly, half pencils can do the trick. So if you're looking to save money, the one thing that you can do is if you've got a friend, you can buy a full kit, cut these in half, and believe me, these half pencils last uh, probably just as long as some of the full ones. In fact, most of the set in here is at least five years old, and you can see they're uh, still quite a bit of length on them. Um, other colors that I typically like to use are watercolors. This in particular are the Gold Faber Aquas. Um, I really like uh, Faber-Castell pencils. They're usually made in Germany, and they come in various different tins, um, but they're all watercolors. And I, I love the way watercolor goes on. It, it uh, Sometimes when you need a less intense color than ink tints, then typically I will, I will use the watercolors. And last but not least, um, we're going to be using colored pencils down the road um, just because they come in so many different colors. This is my Prismacolor set, and Prismacolor is probably the most popular uh, colored pencil out there. High quality, and so let's talk about what the difference is between each one of these. In the Prismacolor, this is pigment and wax, and the wax helps lay down the color. In the case of watercolor, it is pigment made with a soluble 
binder, if you will, so that when liquid hits it, it actually melts the pigment and the binder and sets the uh, color either on paper or as we're going to be doing on fabric. But the beauty of the ink tents pencil is that the ink tents color is actually pure ink. So it's dried ink, and these not only come in, in pencil form, but they also come in block. And they make just really super vivid, intense color. Now, one of the things that we're going to be doing today when we start coloring our cockatoo is learning how to shade with these so that you can get uh, a, a very light color all the way to a very intense color. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we're back. All right, well, the very first thing I've done is I have poured some fabric medium into one of the wells of my paint palette. And um, typically with mm, coloring, you like to start two different ways. One with the lightest color. In this case, that's going to be our sun yellow. And you also like to typically start in the middle and work your way out. That way, if you if you start someplace, your hand is, if you're starting on the outside, your hand is not going over everything and smearing the color. And uh, by the way, um, the instructions this time, um, you can find them on my website, www.medinadomarts.com. And uh, they have each one of the colors listed as well as the uh, uh, alternate colors. Um, the one thing that I do encourage all of you to do is use the sample that you have in here, color it first. Uh, we're gonna save the bling until later, we, so we'll skip over that. Um, but I put this in order of the way I believe it should be colored. Um, so we're going to start with the head first and then work our way down. So the head is primarily done with sun yellow, which is our color right here. Now, the easiest way to do this is to literally, and I'm gonna zoom in here to the head just as we saw it there and start coloring so that you can see this uh, a little bit more up close. I just start coloring very lightly. And if you look at the picture, the color actually fades as you get up towards the top. So I put very little down. But I, if you'll notice, I'm not putting a whole lot of color and my pencil pressure is actually fairly light. So I'm just putting in color in all of these little head feathers. Again, putting it more deeply towards the base putting actually a fair amount of color into the base. We'll actually probably come back in with our Sicilian yellow here in just a second and actually deepen the base. But what I really want is that the color should fade as it gets towards the tip of the feathers. Okay, now that was that color. I'm going to now look for my Cecilia, I should have had these ready prior to doing this. Apologize. This won't take me long to find Sicilian yellow. I do try to keep them all together. Okay, so this is Sicilian yellow, and I'm just going to come down, and as you can see, I'm just going to overlay the color on top of the sun, a little bit deeper color. Again, I'm not being super perfect with this. Uh, we're just laying the color first layers of color down. All right, and so now you should see basically a deeper color towards the base and the lighter color as you get towards the top. Okay, now at this point, um, you could continue coloring. In fact, you could probably color this entire thing before you actually apply the fabric medium. And if you're one of these types of people who like to see everything first, that's an excellent idea. You can certainly do that. Um, it, you don't have to. And I think uh, for the sake of the video today, 
that I'm actually going to do this in steps so that you can see each color as it goes down. So um, the very first thing now that I'm going to do is go over to these areas of the feathers here on the neck and then also his little face. His face, by the way, is done with the Sicilian yellow. So I'm just gonna come in here and color his face. Again, I'm not putting a whole lot of color down. I'm just putting enough down to know that that's what that color is going to be. Um, the fabric medium is going to act as a blender, by the way. And when you put this down, we'll see this here in a minute, you don't have to worry about what it looks like um, initially. All you have to worry about is that you get some color down and we'll I'll show you how to go back in and, and deepen the color once it's wet. Now, the next series of colors you're going to be doing is starting with these head feathers. And the color I'm using here is called Shiraz. And I'm just, you know, deep color initially, uh, fading to a lighter color. Then I'm gonna come in here with Poppy Red and color a little bit here. And then I'll put it down here as well. And then I'm going to grab my tangerine and burnt orange. Actually, burnt orange is probably a deeper color than tangerine. So I'm just gonna lay it down and notice again, I'm not filling these in. I'm just trying to keep the color fairly light. I'll go to here and there's no specific order. I just kind of like to show that the feathers are going from kind of a, a darker red all the way to what will be coming a very pale yellow. Okay, so we get that in. Now I'm gonna switch over and grab my Sicilian yellow again. Color these in really well. Put maybe a little bit down there. Maybe this one back here fill it a little bit more. And now I'm going to grab the sun yellow this is detailed out in your instructions as to exactly which row, but I don't think it really makes a difference. I think the important thing is just to get the color down and then very light color as you get down towards the bottom of the neck. All right, and the collar, which is this right here, I'm going to start out with the burnt orange Do that on either side. And then I'm gonna come in here with the regular orange. Kind of overlap the two so that the colors blend together when I put the fabric medium on. And if you really wanna get clever, throw a little bit of the Sicilian yellow down here at the bottom, uh, just because it blends really well. Okay, now, I the next step, and this is not exactly the way the um, it states in the color mold. Let me pull this down so that you can see what I did. So what I did here was I put burnt orange on either side, then tangerine in here, and overcolored the tangerine with a little bit of um, the Sicilian yellow. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that this is becomes kind of an issue in determining what color you do next, these areas in here are very dark. So you're gonna be using the uh, dark aquamarine, you're going to be using the deep blue, and we're gonna be shading these. Um, but what I typically prefer to do is to go ahead and color the bulk of the body, which is done in sun yellow. And I don't put a ton of color. If you were to look at the picture, you'll see that it's actually fairly light. But I just come in here and I get that color down first um, because I don't like, I don't want to have any bleeding from the other colors. And sometimes what is easier is if you will lay your lighter colors down first 
it's a lot easier to overlay dark colors on top of light than to light color on top of dark. And so I'm just, just going to try to come in and color the top. I'm not going to go all the way down yet because I think at this point in time, it's time to talk about applying fabric medium. Oh, let me get these wings over here because I know that they're done in yellow as well. As you can see, this is going pretty fast. Um, that's the beauty of pencil. You can lay, you can lay color down, and, and you can layer color. In fact, that's probably what we'll do with subsequent of these. Today, it's very easy. I want you to get used to just the concept of pencils and how to use them. Um, but as you can see, most of the body, I mean, we're very close to having most of the body done. And... Um, Let's see, I'm just looking to see if there's anything. Oh, one of the things that I mentioned in your notes is you can actually break off a tip of this pencil. I mean, you get it really good and sharp, break a piece off, and then you can actually throw it inside your fabric medium, let it sit for about 10 minutes, swirl it around, and you'll actually create your own little paint if you find that's easier. I think for this class, you may want to just go ahead and stick with coloring um, as I'm doing here. And then um, we'll do the uh, creating paint later on in another class. Okay, let's see. I'm just making sure. Oh, the areas above the claws. I'm going to come down here, color them with my sun yellow. Again, not being super careful. And last but not least, down here at the tail. And sometimes it is easier to do this in, in different orders. And I'm going to color the outside and this part of the body in sun yellow as well. Again, I want it to fade as it comes down towards the tip. Um, the rest of this, I'll put a little bit in here, but most of this is going to be the orange later on that we'll overlay. All right, and maybe just a tiny bit in here, although that's going to be more orange. Okay, so now we've got most of the bird done. Um, let's start back up at the head and work our way down with fabric medium. So let's see, I'm going to grab a fairly, mm, that one's probably too small. Uh, I'll probably go with this filbert. And I know you think it looks like it's got red on the end, um, but that's actually just colored. It once sometimes you use these ink tints pencils, particularly the darker colors, it stays there. It you know you can wash it as much as you want. You can use Dawn liquid detergent, and it still won't come out. And I'm opening up my water because I do want to um, brush my wash my brush out. Oh, by the way, it's always best to have plenty of paper towels on hand to wipe your brush in between. Okay, so this is very easy. You're gonna dip your brush, and I, I get a fair amount of fabric medium on there, and you start with the base and work your way up, and you coat this um, pretty decently, um, and you'll notice, by the way, I'm gonna zoom in here so that you can see this really well move this over so that I can get this into the camera. Um, as I apply this, the color changes. Okay. And you'll see where down here where I put the Sicilian yellow, it's a little bit deeper color. Now, one of the things that you want to do is you want to run your brush along the stitch line as closely as possible to get that color all the way in. Now your brush, by the time you get up to these head feathers, you're gonna have just the slightest bit of color, which is exactly what you want. If you wanna color this like mine, which by the way, you do not have to. Um, this video is just strictly to show you how I colored it, but you can be creative yourself and figure out any color you want. So if you'll notice towards the, the top here, the color is much less intense than it is down here. And the best way to do that, again, is you drag your color up with fabric medium. And notice, by the way, too, how well this blends. So let's just go ahead and finish these head feathers. And pull again the color from the bottom to the top. 
I keep my brush fairly damp with a uh, fabric medium, but not drippy. You don't really want to get outside the lines. And by the time I get up here, I just kind of blend it back and forth. Scrubbing is a good thing. Sometimes you have to really scrub to get that color in and to get it blended. Okay, let's continue. And if you overlap the feathers, that's okay. All we're trying to do here is to coat any area with pencil with fabric medium. And you, you want to be slightly generous with the fabric medium. Again, not drippy, but you need to get the fabric, the pencil covered with fabric medium in order for the color to stay. Um, even on, on times when I have colored and um, have not gone back in with the fabric medium, I've noticed that the collar will actually rub off if the two piece, if two pieces of fabric come in contact with each other, one that may have color and one that doesn't. Um, so you definitely want to try to get fabric medium on as soon as possible um, to prevent the contamination if you put other fabric on top of it. And as always, um, when we're done, we will be heat setting this. Now I've been asked, can you heat set as you go along? Yes, but um, sometimes what happens is um, I find that the color, if you continually heat set it, you can't go back and overlay color on top of it. Um, there's something about the chemical makeup that changes the, the way this all goes down. And here I'm coming in and doing the last bit of the head feather. And notice again, see it gets it gets lighter. I'm coming in and pulling more of that color up, but it's blended really, really nice. So let me zoom back out again. You can see that um, the higher the feather is, the, the lighter the color. And so the best way to do that is again, start at the base, start at your darker area and work your way up. Okay, now um, we're gonna go do the neck. Actually, let's go ahead and do the face. I'm using the same brush, but I'll be honest with you, those who may have a little bit shaky hands or um, if you feel like this area is very small for you, you may wanna switch over, and I'll do that so I can show you, to the smaller head uh, brush. Again, it's just a tiny little scrubber. You put just a little bit of fabric medium down and you come in here and it does make it a whole lot easier to get in there without contaminating your colors, but getting the fabric medium on where you want it to be. Okay. Let me just finish this up here real quick and then we'll move on to the neck. See, this is going fast. This is not, it's not rocket science, number one. Number two, um, because of the this is not one of the more complex animals. It's it's relatively easy to color color the cockatoo. Okay, now let's zoom in to the neck area again. Now you have this wide variety of colors, which I think makes the cockatoo interesting. And I'm see if I can make sure I get this in so you can see it. Um, you want to go from in this particular case. I like going and dragging the darker color down into the lighter color. So here again, I'm going to start up here at the top. And I'm just, I got my little brush because this is a tiny area. And you want to be very careful not to mix the color from the neck into the head feathers. So I'm trying to be very, very, very careful with this. As you can see, I'm just very gently coloring over and making sure there's fabric meeting. Now, I don't mind dragging it down into the red, but the thing you want to be careful about is not dragging it up into those feathers. And so what I try to do is I like to just scrub very gently right up to the line. Again, mixing these colors right here where they can join is fine and carrying it actually all the way down so that you can kind of get the color up against that line and you don't have to worry about dragging it into um, into the yellow of the face. Same thing, I'm gonna just come along here and I'm gonna drag it very, very carefully across. 
Now bear in mind that if you decide to bling this the way I've done, you're gonna be covering up a lot of this color with the bling. So it's another reason I'm not super careful is because um, this is area that the bling will cover up and you won't see as much. What you will see, well, the reason I do like to color this, particularly um, when there's not quite as much bling, is you don't want to see white spots. Um, I feel like that's the the one thing about this that will make yours look good or make it look great is if you leave too much white area, I think it will still look fine, but I don't think it will look really vivid, which is what the intent of these is, are, is to make them very vivid. Okay, so um, that one area, I'm gonna come in now and introduce a new concept. Um, this area to me is not as dark as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to come in here while it's still wet and I'm going to put a little bit more orange down there and you see what happens when I do that. It really pops the color. And once I've done that, I'll get my brush wet with a little bit of fabric medium and come back over and blend. And doesn't that look great? Um, this is called a dry on wet technique. Um, the first one that we used is called dry on dry. Um, but this is the dry, uh, excuse me, dry on wet, right, dry on wet, because you're putting a dry pencil onto, we're going to be doing wet on wet here in just a minute um, for the uh, medallion, but I want to show you this first and get through the neck. I'll move this down just a bit. Now, I want that color to fade as it comes towards the yellow. So I don't want it, I don't want to go back over the area unless you think that's what it should look like. Again, this is this is strictly a guideline. This is not telling you how you should do it, but it just gives you an idea of how to work the color. And now by this time, I just kind of smear the the fabric medium all over. I'm getting down towards the lighter color, just like we did up on the head feathers. I want the area closest as we go down the neck to be less vivid than the top of the neck. So I'm just slapping that fabric medium down and just dragging a bit of that yellow. You may not even be able to see it as you get towards the end, although believe me, there is tiny bits of color as you work your way down this neck. Just keep dragging it down, dragging it down. Be careful not to get into the collar just yet. Okay, so there we have it. Now you can start, go ahead directly into the, the collar. And again, be very careful. This is where you slow down a bit. You just ease it back and forth, working the little brush against the stitch line. Okay. Keep dipping your brush into the fabric medium. And now I think I'll switch back over here. Start up here. Okay, again, work that brush right up against the stitch line. You want to get that color right up against there. And sometimes you may have to turn your brush straight up on end and let the very tips of the paintbrush whiskers, bristles, do the work for you. Okay, and a little bit more down here. And I'll turn this so that you can see it. Oh, by the way, turning your work as you work on this is really a good idea, because the whole key is, again, you do not want, and you'll notice, by the way, um, I actually place my hand, a pinky, on, on the outside of the pattern. And so I can kind of give my hand a little tripod rest so that I can actually work that color. And that looks pretty good. Let me zoom back out. And this is going to be the end of part two. And the next thing we will do is work on the rest of the body. Okay, this is part three. And we're going to focus on the medallion and the shoulder and the little dots that are across the top here. Um, the reason I wanna focus in on these is because these are very small areas and 
Most of the time I'm going to tell you, you do not want to sharpen your pencils really super sharp as they will leave streak marks when you color in say an area like the yellow that I did here. In fact, if you'll notice, most of my pencils are fairly blunt tipped um, for that very reason and so they won't leave streak marks when I color. However, because the areas that we're coloring today are so tiny, um, we want to try to stay as small as or as sharp as possible. And so both of my blues, the aqua, dark aquamarine and the deep blue, I have gone and sharpened to the absolute nth degree so that I can get in and, and get the color. A um, couple of things. Um, I don't explain this as well as I should in my instructions because it's somewhat difficult. But um, I, I did decide to color the center. It's it's a mix. I put just a tiny, 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 tiny bit of green. Um, by the way, I believe I switched the green uh, for this class. The green that I chose to use was spring green as opposed to beach green. Um, I thought it was a better color. And now I'm going to add maybe a tiny, 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 tiny bit of yellow. I want that as faint as I possibly can be. And then I'm going to take my um, aquamarine and just kind of very, very lightly outline the little swirl there all the way around. Very little color. Um, you'll see here in a minute why I do that. Um, it will give a really nice blended color. Okay, now the other colors that we're going to use this deep blue we're actually going to come in here to the, let's see if I can zoom in because I want you to be able to see this. Okay, um, this area right here, just start coloring. Um, again, you see with it being a nice sharp tip, uh, it gets into all the little areas. This is very, very tight. And so you want as much of the blue color in the little circle area around in here, into there, all the way into here. You can see why a sharp tip is 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 necessary here because there's no way to get that color in if the if the if it were blunt you'd end up skipping outside the lines and we kind of don't want to do that unless again that is your choice and your preference. I can't stress enough how much this is simply my interpretation, and hopefully you will have your interpretation of how this should look. Okay, so there's... So now we're going to use the dark aquamarine color to actually come here on the outside and color in the little area on the very outside. I'm actually going ahead and start this area and again I want this to fade to a lighter color so I'm going to start out dark and then just you know carry a little tiny bit up into here same with these um, again just like we did with the, the head feathers we'll let the uh, fabric medium pull the color up into the very tips and likewise very light in through these little triangular parts And then I actually colored these fairly deep because I like to have the color in behind the stone really pop that color out. Oh, it's really easy. Oops, I made a boo-boo. Okay, so you're going to ask, well, now what do I do there? Well, I'll show you. Um, it's going to happen. Just accept it. Um, most of the time, you're going to be the only person who's going to see that. By the way, I'll carry this color up here. It's very dark up here at the top. Now, if you're lucky enough and you color in an area that's going to be covered over with dark, that's great. Um, if you're in an area um, where there's going to be light, um, look, I'm going to be honest with you, you'll probably end up having to mix the color a bit, but trust me, you're going to be the only one who's really going to notice that. Not everybody else will. I'm going to do it very light in here 
and then we're gonna do an overlay on that outside. Um, yellow is going to be in the center of these, but I don't wanna put it in there yet until I do this. Oops, and let's come down here and finish this. And this. You know, I wanna try to get all of this done and I keep jumping around, I beg your pardon. That's not normally how I color, it's just the way I color when I do a video. Um, I'm just wanting to make sure everybody sees it, but I don't want to sit here and be too verbose and talk your ear off and I know all you really want to do is color. Now I kind of make that a little dark. I like this aquamarine color and I'll put lighter color in here, dark over here. Okay, now believe it or not, before I go any further, I do want to go ahead and, and lock down this blue color and let it dry. Um, that is the one thing when you work with dark colors and you're worried about it mixing with other color, you definitely want to do it very carefully, number one. I'm bringing my, my stuff as close as I can. And you're just going to color, just dab the fabric medium on there. Blend it if you can, but I typically just dab to really get that nice deep color, but without going outside the lines. I mean, this is such a small area that whatever you do will look fine. Um, don't get carried away with it being perfect. Just get enough fabric medium down to make the color blend and notice again, I'm just dabbing. And again, coming over here, I'm going to start and do the darker area first. Now, in looking at my picture, and it's been a bit since I actually colored the cockatoo, so I have to remind myself exactly what did I do. Um, I'm going to finish coloring this. Um, and again, running the brush very easily along the stitch line. Um, I mixed a little bit, but that's okay because that center color is supposed to be this anyway. But I'm being very, very careful not to get that color out into that yellow because you will have green. No two ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, which might look okay. Um, again, there's no, no, no rules here, ladies, and whoever else watches this. Um, so I'm going to just finish this up here real quick and then I want to show you what I did to kind of darken this area. I came back with the deep blue um, and I darkened it up just a little. I'm kind of filling in what I missed with the dark aquamarine. I just love the way this looks. And notice I drag the pencil along the stitch line again to fill in some more. Ah, oh, yeah, I like that color. And then I'm going to come in here and blend those two together. There's probably enough fabric medium already down. Just be careful not to get it drippy. If you dip, dip very lightly. Get that color right up into that stitch line. Oh, that looks good. Oh, I like that. All right. Now I'm going to wash my brush off here real quick. I want to actually go to the lighter area. And color that in here real quick. So see, it was really the same color, but it if, if, if you keep your pencil when you touch it to the fabric very light, you can actually manage to get a fairly lightish color of the same tone, which now makes it look like you used several different colors of pencil. If you are using other pencils besides Inktense pencils, most of them will come, like the Prismacolor I have, 150 color, and you can decide on what colors these should all look. Okay, now most of the rest of this is going to be the same. So I feel like um, most of what I'm doing here 
is repeating myself on, on how to color this. So uh, the only other thing that I wanna show you is down here on the branch. I did end up using the spring green, but honestly, I think the branch you could probably save until last. Um, it doesn't have to be done in any color specifically. It's just a green I thought looked really nice. I mean, if you have a brown that you would prefer, that's cool too. But again, I just colored very lightly. Ooh, be careful not to make, you know, since this is going in a certain direction, I would keep your pencil going in a certain direction. That was probably a faux pas on my part to go back and forth like this because now it's going to show up that way. So stick strictly in one direction. And then just like what we did earlier, um, get uh, some of the color up near here. I actually like it darker towards the top of the branch. Okay. And then um, with a wider brush, something like that. I'm gonna come in here and dip it in the fabric medium. And this is nice. This is nice big wide area. You can slosh that fabric medium all around. Again, you wanna work right up to the stitch line get that color up in there ah yes i'm glad i switched you guys over to the spring green that looks much better as a color the other one was a little bit too dark um this is supposed to be a bright happy block all of them are actually okay so that's it pretty much in a nutshell if you have any further questions about coloring the cockatoo, um, you know that you can always contact me at Medina Dom Arts, M E D I N A D O M A R T S, at AOL.com, or you may call at 303 818 3625. Um, I will be posting this out. Um, either shortly before the class or shortly after the class. Sometimes I pick up information from the class that I forget to tell those of you who are remote. And so I want to make sure that you guys all have the same information. And again, the instructions are currently out there. Um, please go check them out as well as this video. And enjoy coloring. Thank you.